Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing an amp and sub on this 2015 Mazda 3. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to install this amp and sub to the existing factory radio. Let's get started. Now, one quick thing to note in this Mazda 3, we do have the factory upgraded Bose audio system that we'll have to integrate into. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we tap in for signal for our amp and sub. So without further ado, let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to need for the install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're going to go with is first and foremost, the amp and sub. Now this actually happens to be a combo unit where the amp and the sub are built into one. This is the 10 inch Rockford Fosgate amplified sealed box. Um, it does about 300 watts RMS, and it's a great unit because everything is all in one package. Now, to wire this to the vehicle, we do need an amplifier wiring kit. We're going with this new Concepts 8-gauge amplifier wiring kit. It comes with power wire, ground, RCAs, everything that you'll need basically for your install. Finally, because we have bows, whether you have bows or not, you'll need some sort of line-out converter. Now, mind you... Units like this can take a high level input, but being that this has the Bose amplified system, we'll need a little bit better line out converter. And this is a high powered unit where essentially it'll also provide a remote turn on wire to trigger the amplifier to turn on when it sees audio over the factory speakers. Now this is the basic components that we'll need in our install today. So at this point, what we need to do is grab our wiring kit plus the power wire here. We're going to head to the car, open up the hood and start riding our power wire through the firewall from the battery area all the way to the trunk of the vehicle. As we look up underneath the hood here, the battery is on the driver's side, kind of back towards the firewall area. And the grommet that we're going into is just back behind the battery. We'll get you in there a little bit tighter. But essentially here, also that grommet has a factory little nipple that sticks off, meant for additional accessories. So we can actually cut that protruding nipple off and that'll provide a hole or access through that grommet into the inside of the vehicle where we can run our power wire. Now obviously here, we're gonna to connect to the positive post here on the battery, and we wanna connect our inline fuse as close to the battery as possible. So there is our grommet kind of back in there, as you can see against that firewall, and that little nipple there in the top there is what we can cut off, and it basically is a hole or access point through that rubber grommet, keeping us clear of any factory wiring, and we can pull our eight gauge through that firewall hole. So we went ahead in that firewall, we cut that nipple off, and that's about as close as I can get you. But essentially you got little flush cuts in there and it's really soft rubber. And then we went from the inside and poked this metal hanger through, which essentially comes out to this point. Now we're gonna go inside to show you exactly where that pass through is. And really that just allows us easy pass through. We're gonna use this hanger to help pull our power wire through that firewall from the inside. And there is our main firewall grommet. There's a little hole on top of it. If you lift that on up, there's this little hole already on this end that we fed our hanger through and that just poked right on through the other side. Perfect little passage for our eight gauge power wire. What we've done here is we've grabbed our power wire. We taped it on there and we're starting to lube that up really well, some soap and water. And we're gonna go top side and pull that right on through the firewall. All right, so what we've done is pulled that power wire through the firewall, as you saw there. Now we split loomed it and zip tied along factory wiring all the way through where it goes through the blute. Just give it a little more protection up underneath the hood here. Now we created a fuse holder, a little piece of ABS plastic, and we snagged that bolt there, a little S-bend and that piece of plastic, and that allows us to mount our fuse holder right there. Then we have a little short length that'll go to this stud. All these other bolts here are all behind factory fuses, as you can see. So we don't want to go to those to put an additional load on that fuse. So we're going to go right here because we're running our own fuse right to that uh, terminal, not to this tightening stud, but actually the bolt here. Now we won't hook that up until we're ready to actually hook up the um, amp and sub there in the trunk. But for now, we have that all ready to go. Now we can turn our attention to the inside to start running that power wire to the trunk area.
Now you saw us prepare our ground and we found that great bolt right there. And we cleaned that paint up and put our ground right there. Nice solid ground. All right, so we're here in the trunk. We fit our power wire and ground wire to the trunk here. Now we left plenty of length here so we can move the sub up and around the trunk as needed. Now the nice thing is this type of amp sub combo um, has this plug that allows us to disconnect our power um, so we can actually finish our connections here and plug this into the the, the side built-in amplifier when we are ready. Got our start running our base knob cable here and the last step here is we need to go ahead and identify signal where we can feed our base amplifier here the signal it needs so it knows what to play. Now in this vehicle it doesn't have a dedicated standalone subwoofer as in a lot of Bose systems. What Mazda opted for at least in this trim level is generally there is a sub there in the back deck but we don't have one just tweeters. The components set up front so we have a center channel tweeter and a mid bass. Here in the kick that is our subwoofer um, that's just playing the low frequencies and so that is the speaker that we want to tap into or at least the speakers for signal for our amplifier. Now because we have the Bose there's actually a Bose amp underneath the passenger seat that we can snag both sets of signal from one location and so that's where we're going to head is underneath that seat now if you didn't have the Bose sound system, you can snag the signal from the same location there just in the kick. You can pull apart the B pillar, snag signal from the rear door. Or if you have coaxial sets here in the trunk, you can do that. Now we only have tweeters back here, so we can obviously connect into these because they won't play the frequency that we need for our sub. So um, if you have full range back here, you can also tap into that. Again, if you don't have the Bose audio sound system. Up underneath the hood here, since we have the special plug that we can disconnect from the amplifier, we can connect our power wire to our battery, which we've done there. Again, we went ahead and went right to that bolt, and we slightly modified this so it can shut and um, be as if it was factory. Everything's nice and zip tied and split loomed here. So technically we're done under the hood. If you have a traditional base amplifier or four channel or five channel, whatever you're installing, you want to make sure that amp is totally wired, power and ground, and all your connections are made before you do this. And it's also ideal when you're hooking that up, pull the negative off the battery. When that negative is off the battery, you can make those connections, reducing any tendency of sparking. And then once everything's been connected, put the negative back on. So in our circumstance here, we're done. We can go ahead and shut the hood. All right, so we're here at the bench. Now let's talk about snagging signal from the factory audio sound system. Um, what we're gonna do is snag signal from the Bose amplifier that are up underneath the seats. That's where we can tap in both the left and the right mid bass that's located in the lower door, um, lower front doors of our vehicle. We don't have a traditional sub. Now you can also still do this whether you have the Bose amplifier or not. Um, you just may snag it from the B pillar, from the kick panel, from other locations here. So what we have, since we're doing a high level input, is we have two sets of twisted pair wires. We're gonna do a left and the right here, and we're gonna send this all the way back to our amplifier. Our amplifier that's built into the sub has a high level input harness mixed into this low level input harness. What we'll do is actually cut these off. We don't need the RCA ends, and we're gonna solder on our wires. Then the other end of this harness, we're gonna connect into the left and the right. We'll just tee into those wires up underneath the passenger seat for signal. This will carry that signal into our high level input harness and that'll go into the amplifier located on the side of our powered box. Now, if you don't have a high level input, uh, we do recommend the Pack Audio LP7-2. Um, this is cool and also generates a remote turn on output for you. Um, it's a high power input. Now, if you're worried about bass roll off, you can also consider an audio control LC2Y, which can correct that bass roll off. Okay, so at this point of time, we're going to get this harness all soldered up here. Then we're going to head over to the car. We'll tip back the seat and show you what wires that we need to tap into. All right, so we went ahead and soldered on our connections here. We got our two sets. Put the heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with a heat gun. Then we'll reloom the rest of the harness and some Tessa tape. Once completed, then we can head over to the vehicle to start getting all this run and installed. 
All right, so we're back in the car. Now what we've done here is grabbed the harness that we made. We fed it up through here, as you can see, ran it all the way back to our amplifier. This end we'll need to tap into four sets of speaker wire. Now you saw us lay the seat back and this black harness has our mid-base drivers um, that are in the front doors and here are our wire colors. Now the four sets of speaker wires that we need to tap into, we have our mid-base drivers that are in the front doors. Now front left, when we pull this black harness out, front left is positive is light green, negative is red, and then front right positive is pink and negative is dark green they're twisted pairs so you'll grab those two sets of twisted pairs and connect your either your line out converter or your high level input like we're doing and what we've done is add a little bit of solder to those connections and we're going to tape them up with electrical tape and relume our harness with some tessa tape basically that is it now like i said if you're not doing a high level input like we are you can connect your line out converter to those four sets of speaker wires and that also does the job all right, so we went ahead and cleaned up our wiring, got everything soldered, taped, and uh, put some new Tessa tape on, zip tied it all together. That is it, all integrated. There is an accessory on here, and we'll show you where to connect into in case your amplifier or lineout converter won't turn on for you. So that's about it. We've tested it, and it works. Let's go ahead and reinstall the seat. All right, so we got the seat all bolted back in. That's all nice and clean. All right, so we got everything connected to our amplifier. There's a, the other end of a high level input harness. Power and ground, again, we don't need a remote because it's going to, since the DC offset over the factory audio, to turn on the sub amp for us. But we got our base knob, and that's it for connection. Now we left plenty of length of wire here in case he wants to move it around in the back of the trunk. But that's about it. We'll just tuck everything back and make it nice and clean. All right, so that's about it for this install. We are done here. It sounds great. We tested everything, set our gains, our crossovers, everything like that. Now, if you want to pick up any of the parts that you saw us use in this video, we'll link them down in the description for you. Also, if you like what you saw, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.